this room is really uh, was eight or nine months in the making, but it's the acoustic fields, bass traps that really made this room sing. Now it's really quite a musical room, that's the way I would put it. You can hear extremely well sitting in the client couch, and I, it's you can hear amazingly well sitting in the mix position. And we used to have something too where if you stood up you'd get a slightly different low frequency response. That also is gone now. Because I'm in New York City, because I've been doing this for three decades, because I have a lot of rock star engineer best friends. Uh, you've seen them on the Mix Master Wyatt show. Uh, Chris Garinger, Luca Predilesi, um, you know, all kinds of top engineers doing number one records in the country. I get to move around to some of the best rooms um, really on the planet. And, uh, and when they come up here, they're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. You can hear everything in this room. And, and I'm really happy to say, and I'm an endless fiddler, uh, that it's really in a place where I wouldn't change a thing. Um, and when people come in, I had the musical director for, for Chris Brown's world tour here yesterday who was out on Lady Gaga's Monster Ball tour, uh, top, top producer, musical director, and he was like, this room sounds insane. He was like, I haven't heard a room sound as good as this in a long time. And he gets also gets to walk in the top room. So um, I'm extremely happy with it. This room wasn't done until the acoustic fields, uh, bass trap technology entered the room. And then once we did exactly what was proposed by you, Dennis, uh, the whole thing snapped into place. So um, I couldn't, I really just, I couldn't be happier. Tell me what you're hearing that you couldn't hear before. Well, I mean, you know, basically this, this studio is literally a uh, garage. And um, it's sort of 9 by 18. Uh, Joe Salvato, who's a good longtime friend of mine, um, and I've, we've, I've worked with him on so many projects. I told him when it was time to build my room, he was the guy to do it, and he knew that. And so we started construction probably about eight months ago, and just dealing with local ordinances and different things. It took its time, and also having the work done by friends. You, you know, it's hard to yell at your friends. Um, uh, but things made their way, and then finally, you know, we saved the base trapping for last. We built some really nice uh, panels in here for the mid-range, put a nice cloud in, put some hard diffusion in as well, and, you know, typically in building a room, we like to do the base last because sometimes there's a broadband component, sometimes there's a tuned component, depending on the dimensions of the room. So we did that last, and it was sounding really good in here, uh, the the monitoring in here is a dangerous D box uh, built by Chris Meath and um, uh, a pair of B and W Diamond 802s, uh, a pair of Avantones, and all of the amps are Brystons. We have a 2B and then a 4B on the Diamond 802s, um, and so we set everything up and it sounded very very good except for the bass was a little uneven in the um, in the engineer's seat, in the engineering position, and there was a lot of bass in the back of the room. <clears throat> so uh, Joe said, you know, I, I, I did some research, I talked to this guy, Dennis, out, you know, West, works for this company, Acoustic Fields, it's a new experience for me, I've never worked with this technology, he's got this new technology, it involves charcoal, and I would love to have your room be the first room that I, you know, use his new Dennis's technology and do an installation. So, of course, I said, sure, let's do it, you know. Um, so he, he began to, I guess he spoke with you, Dennis, um, and he began to, to do the construction with the non-disclosure uh, uh, signature and get some coaching from you and materials, and he built, I think the first thing that he did is he built a broadband and a narrow band, um, and he put them on the back wall. So he put those in, I'd say, about three months ago, and immediately the bass changed in the room, 
the base was very, very tight in the back of the room in the client couch position behind the mixer's seat. And that was amazing, but it almost sort of changed the base in the front of the room. And, and so Joe was like, you know, I wasn't sure if we were going to need two or three. Dennis kind of, uh, you know, counseled us to use three. I didn't know if the room would deal with two. I think Dennis was right. Let's do three. And then I think he went back and built the final base trap, which we loaded into the front of the room, I'd say about two and a half months ago. And literally when the final base trap went up and in front in the room, the room really came together. It was like the the clouds cleared and the sun, sh the Jesus light sh shone down from the heavens, and all of a sudden the room really came together. And uh, the way I would describe it um, w is just that it is generous in base, um, but it's also tight, um, and it's softened the mids and the highs in a way that I can only say was just kind of amazing, uh, magical really. Um, we, we, it softened the vocals and it also gave more detail to the reverbs and probably you can describe why that happened uh, better than me. Um, and now it's really quite a musical room, that's the way I would put it you can hear extremely well sitting in the client couch and it's you can hear amazingly well sitting in the mix position and we used to have something too where if you stood up you'd get a slightly different low frequency response that also is gone now and you know because I'm in New York City because I've been doing this for three decades because I have a lot of rock star engineer best friends uh, you've seen them on the Mix Master Wyatt show uh, Chris Garinger, Luca Predilacy, um, you know, all kinds of top engineers doing number one records in the country. I get to move around to some of the best rooms um, really on the planet. And, uh, and when they come up here, they're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. You can hear everything in this room. And I prefer my rooms a little bit on the dead side. Um, uh, so it's it's a it's got I have a lot of carpet on the floor. I have my clouds and I have basically um, panels everywhere. Uh, but this room is really uh, was eight or nine months in the making. But it's the acoustic fields, bass traps that really made this room sing. And uh, you know I, I you know talked to Chris Garinger when he moved from Midtown to downtown at Sterling. He um, set up his room, and they moved things around by centimeters for, um, you know, uh, three weeks. And then finally, once the room really spoke to him, and, it, you know, it's a bit of art and a bit of science. It's a little bit of both when your room somehow has the forward force from the low end, the imaging comes together, the instruments sound like they should look like, and the whole thing comes together. And once the whole thing really speaks to you, you don't touch it anymore. It's not something that you try to make a 5% improvement for the next 10 years. You actually leave it. And I'm really happy to say, and I'm an endless fiddler, uh, that it's really in a place where I wouldn't change a thing. Um, and when people come in, I had the musical director for, for Chris Brown's world tour here yesterday who was out on Lady Gaga's Monster Ball tour. Uh, top, top producer, musical director, and he was like, this room sounds insane. He was like, I haven't heard a room sound as good as this in a long time. And he gets also gets to walk in the top room. So um, I'm extremely happy with it. This room wasn't done until the acoustic fields, uh, bass trap technology entered the room. And then once we did exactly what was proposed, by you, Dennis, uh, the whole thing snapped into place. So um, I couldn't, I really just, I couldn't be happier. Uh, no ear fatigue, lots and lots of low frequency forward dynamics at a low listening volume, which is always what I'm looking for because, you know, I've done lots of different music over in my career. Right now I find myself um, 
in, in an EDM space, which I always loved even before it was cool. Uh, and so, you know, we deal with a lot of low frequency um, projects and projects that are really meant to be uh, played back in clubs. And I have a very clubby function one response at a low listening level. So uh, I'm a very, very happy camper there. <laughs> well, <laughs> wow. Uh, so I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. <laughs> that that uh, every word you said, Danny, was exactly the premise I used to develop the technology. Everything that you articulated that you heard was what I was never hearing in rooms. Yes. And the the diaphragmatic absorption technology that you are hearing in your room with the carbon, I had the technology. I just didn't have the carbon fill because the fill material is the rate of absorption. It's the rate of absorption that's necessary in order for de definition, separation, and clarity to occur. It's not necessarily a hunt, grab a hundred percent of everything. Well, well, that, that makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. The rate of absorption, because the way I experience the room now, is that the low frequency decay is smooth, but it's tight. In other words, there's nothing eating the base, and and 808s and low frequency material can extend and decay, but it doesn't hang out past its welcome. So so, again, you know, I I try to keep my brain innocent of anything I don't really need to know, and I've been a very successful guy at doing that for many many years now. So I don't really understand how you achieved it, but I do know that you achieved it. And um, and I think part of the signature sound of, of this technology that you've created is the decay of the low end is smooth, but it's generous. Yes, and it's a nice... I always thought to myself, why can't we have the same definition and clarity in the low end that we have in the middles and highs. It's easy to get good definition and clarity with the mids and the highs. Absorption, diffusion, good technologies to do that. We, we've we accomplished that, I believe, as engineers. But the low end is always problematic. I don't care who's designing the room or who's working in the room. And this was my goal, to give people a tool that really has an impact on attack and decay. Well, well, I think that, that that has been achieved here, and I'm glad, you know, I don't know if you typically recommend to do the base response, the low frequency response last, but I'm glad we did it that way in this room, because I think it allowed us to figure out where the mixed position in this room wanted to be, and, you know, anytime I go to people's rooms, I either see them set up... Um, where they're sitting where the room wants them to sit, and then so they're not fighting the room, and the rooms typically have a more musical response. Or some people always like to sit where at, you know, 5.45 the sun comes in the window and it sets, the sun sets on their coffee cup in a certain way, and they always wanted to have a view of the sycamore tree. And, you know, I don't know, like I've had friends like that, and they end up sitting in really weird places in the room, might only be one or two or three feet off from where the room is telling them to sit, and that sometimes those rooms never get good, um, just because they're stubborn about, you know, where the mixed position wants to be. So, so I think in this room, we got, we sort of met the room where it was, in a sense, before the base trapping. And then we, then with the base trapping, it only got better and it only got better. And, you know, it's interesting because I, I'm asked this all the time about subwoofers. And I'm, and I know I have friends that use them and I have, who make number one records. And I have friends that don't, who also make number one records. I am an anti-subwoofer person. I will go out there and say that. 
I don't like subwoofers. I find they're usually band-aids for much bigger problems that don't get addressed. And you just slap a big hunk of low end in your cancellation hole, and it's still canceling. And then your room nodes are, are the, all the worse for it. And it makes for a party response, but I don't think it makes for a very clinical response. And one of my favorite, you know, rooms is, is Chris Garinger's room uh, at Sterling uh, in New York in the Meatpacking District. And he has no subwoofer, and he has plenty of free-moving sub-frequencies that can stick out and recede and attack and decay very quickly. His, you know, trap music in his room sounds like trap music. And, uh, and, and low-frequency R&B and hip-hop sound right in his room with no subwoofer. Um, and, uh, you know, I also had a room uh, built in New York City. I had a little room built off of Dubway. Um, and um, it was also built by the head of construction who helped build um, uh, uh, Sterling. And, and it was such a beautiful room that we had small uh, Genelex at that time with six-inch woofers, but the room was so sweet that you could hear the subs perfectly. And we did a lot of hip-hop at that time, a lot of stuff for Raucous Records, and um, Ultra Records and different record companies at that time. And with these, people walk in and say, where's the sub? Um, and we had six-inch woofers on some small Genelex. Um, so that's just a long story to say that if the room is behaving properly, I think you don't need a sub. I don't know, Dennis, where you come out with the whole sub debate, but I'm, I'm anti-sub. I'll just say it. If... If the room, you said it so well, Danny, if the room is behaving itself, less is more. Yep. You just don't need all that energy. If, if the room is behaving correctly, it's, it's the old problem. I want to hear more of the good stuff in the room, so I'm going to turn the gain up. And that causes the room then to react to more pressure and unwanted pressure. And then it just makes matters worse. So then you turn the gain up a little more to try and squeeze more out of it. And that's not, not what you need. The room has to behave itself. And then less is so much more. I have heard rooms with low end with six inch drivers that sound wonderful. Exactly. Same here. Me too. Me too. And, yeah. and I've heard rooms with huge subs that sound terrible. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I have to uh, laugh a little bit about your comment um, when you got the units installed, how the mids and the highs came together really nice. And I've had that experience many, many times. And it's a wonderful experience because you know they're there. You know your electronics are capable of producing what you want to hear but when you drop the pressure in the room with the carbon and cover the low end like you should Joe did his job he got you all the mids and highs that you needed you just couldn't hear them well but 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 that's that's exactly right and I think it was interesting because we were picking amps for the Diamond 802s and um, he I didn't have an amp like that. These were my first set of, of sort of this style speaker um, that I was able to use in my personal studio. And um, so he gave us first a loaner, a Macintosh amp. It was solid state um, with huge, you know, it was a 400 pound. I forget the model number. It must have weighed two tons. Transformers, the whole thing. And so it had a rich, slow transient kind of sound to it. And it was a pleasing sound. And I think I would want it for my home stereo, having like a really good glass of wine or something at the end of the day. But on a clinical level, it was almost too rich and flattering for a daytime, let's nitpick this master a little kind of thing. And so when we switched to the Bryston, transformerless, 
it was a much quicker, faster sound, and it almost was too clear for me at first for a moment. It was almost too clear. And, um, but I got used to it because I, it was very, very clinical, and I could tell, ultimately, I could work critically very, very quickly on these once I got to know them. And still, there was something that I didn't love about the sound yet. Um, and I was using Calvin Harris as a reference um, because I think he is a great producer who really spans the radio club thing very well. I think he, his tracks tend to translate very well in both, which is a lot of what I'm doing right now. So as soon as we dropped that final... Um, bass trap in the front of the room, it softened the sound. And it's it, it took a harshness out of the frequency response of the speakers, almost like we changed the amp. I mean, if it, I would have lost that bet. I would have easily lost that bet. I would have said, you stuck a different amp in there, right? Um, and now it's really the best of both worlds because it's a very quick amp sound but it's easier on the ears, it's a little less strident, it's rounder, and I think it's more the intention of the engineers. I'm hearing more the intentions of the, en of the engineers, and it's not one of those things where everything's flattering and you can't tell good from bad, because if something comes up that's bad, you can hear right away that it's bad. So, so it's a very, but if something's good, it sounds amazing. Um, but it does show faults in things, which is what I was looking for. I wasn't looking for something that where everything sounded good, and so I would be too lenient on projects. Um, I'm hearing uh, lots of mistakes in the ultra high end, I would say. Um, and I think that's a function of the amps, the speakers, and the way the room is working. But if, if I'm finding that a mixer is not being um, making enough judicious, reductive EQ around from 16K and up, and if there's traffic up there, I'm hearing it now better than I've ever heard it in my life up there. And sometimes, you know, my, my business is very much a STEM mastering business. Um, and so, as long as I have the stems, um, I can just do some low-pass filters and set them very, very high, especially in a lot of these sort of all-digital productions coming out of the EDM world. And hushing the high end um, is something I can hear now better than ever in this room. And every, all the clients have been very, very happy. They're like, not sure what you're doing but it's smoother, it sounds better at a really loud listening volume, and the low mids and the lows are hitting me better because I'm not getting poked in the ear by excessive high highs that I think I simply just wasn't monitoring as well before this room came together. Yeah. Well, a lot of people really don't understand the impact that low frequency energy has on mids and highs. They they kind of view those as separate areas and well the bass isn't going to have an impact on my mids and highs, so I can kind of not be too concerned about that, but it's the pressure that the low frequency produces within the room that smothers and blurs things. And when you reduce that pressure, you, you can hear it. It's always been there, but you can hear it. It just jumps out at you, and whenever I hear that happen, I just sit in the chair and smile. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was so funny because, uh, you know, I was here with Joe, and he lived with the room the whole time, and um, he's a great designer. He's a great um, combination of art and science, I would say, almost like building a violin. If it was all science, it would be built by a computer. Um, that being said, there is a science to it. And I think, you know, we were all in a bit of suspense, uh, you know, because the room was coming together. And as soon as we dropped it up there, I mean, we could almost hear talking in the room, that just talking changed. And as soon as I put on the reference tracks, we all just smiled. 
And we were like, we're done. We're done. We're done. And I think we went out to lunch <laughs> and didn't come back. So until the next day, which was a work day. So um, that, you know, it's that, been a that's my favorite thing to see. <laughs> it's been a it's been an absolute total success here, and and everybody who comes in to hear the room, especially the heavy hitters, um, they're blown away. They're blown away. And like I said. It's not just the mixed position, but the, the client couch is very tight and accurate. And sometimes, you know, sometimes in hip hop to have a boomy client couch serves a certain clientele who just can never have too much subs and too much bass. But um, for those who are a little more picky, want to hear more the way the engineer is hearing, now they can sit right behind me. Um, and there's the, the, the room nodes and the distribution in the room is so smooth and so even that really, like I said, you get a ton of dynamic low frequency at a very reasonable listening volume. Um, and to yes. me, that's the hallmark. Those are my favorite rooms. Rooms with lots and lots of dynamic low end at a low listening volume with no subwoofer. That's what I like. Yes. And that's what we achieved here with yes. the help of your technology. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it is a great joy to hear everything, isn't it, in, in, in one comfortable position? It is. It is. And in New York, you know, um, we have some great rooms, and there are some rooms where the emperor really has no clothes. And, uh, and sometimes you find yourself there, and you find yourself engineering in high-pressure situations, and you're guessing. And it's no fun to guess. It's much more fun to uh, have the confidence that you know that what you're doing is going to translate. And, you know, part of, you know, a big part of the philosophy at DubSpot in the Mixing Mastering Program is that we use reference tracks very religiously. And so, and I do it with my clients uh, on an international, you know, basis as well. And so when somebody wants something mastered, uh, or stem mastered, stereo mastering, or a mix, I have them send me a high-resolution WAV file, 44.1, 24-bit, or 16-bit WAV file, um, of, of something that they think sounds really, really good. And we will match to it. And then when you can hear that, that reference track, which is probably a popular track, whether it's commercial or underground, and you can match to that track, and then you can accurately bridge the gap because you're hearing what you need to hear. You know, when you're done with that workday, you're done. And you know that you're good. So yes. um, there's something incredibly satisfying about that and not having to guess and to hear all the dynamics and all the frequencies. I mean, that's really what it's about. Um, and, uh, and low end, I think, being the trickiest domain to uh, to tame, like you said, I think there were technologies in place that were very effective on the uh, high end, you know, hard diffusion, and then the uh, low mids and the mids and the upper mids with the soft absorption. Um, but the bass trapping, always the toughest, always the toughest. Um, so. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm not changing a thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great. I, I, I love my customers uh, immensely, but it's so great for me to hear uh, a professional like yourself that really understands what I try to create and, and hear it and believe in it. And that you've made my year, to be honest. <laughs> well, well uh, in all uh, reciprocity, You've made my year, so uh, <laughs> and I think you've made well, some years, you. years to come. So well, you know, I, I, I hope so. Absolutely, uh, and I, you know, so Dennis, I, I, you know, I can't thank you enough for, you know, inventing this technology, and um, and believing in it, and propagating it, and helping Joe uh, all the way across country get it together in this room. And um, and all I can say is, you know, the proof really is in the, the amazing response of this room, and this response I'm getting to the room, which is just across the board, people are just blown away. So, um, 
just want to thank you and and uh, hopefully this will uh, serve a little bit as a testament to those who are either building new rooms or have been sitting in a room with low frequency problems and uh, you know knowing what they're missing but not knowing what they're missing um, because this th you know this technology was very clear and straightforward to 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 set up and it worked instantly yeah good well Danny thank you so much for your time we, we surely appreciate it here my, uh, my pleasure and we'll keep it going Dennis all, all right. right take care you too cheers bye-bye Bye.